Stefan, do you think that there's any that we should address? No, we are good right now. Okay, very good. Let me keep going. So let me show a very simple example of Bayesian parameter estimation to give you some intuition. So suppose that you have, suppose that you know your model, uh, so that it's very, it's very straightforward to actually uh, perform the Bayesian analysis. So you have some observable that depends on the parameter x. Your model is simply some linear model. And your measurement is some value here that I represent here. So your model, so this is your observable, this is your model parameter, this is your model, this is the data with some uncertainty. And what you want to do is perform a Bayesian parameter estimation. So you want to constrain X given, um, given your, your model. Now, this is a very simple example. You can almost read the answer, right? You can see that some region here is what will be uh, favored by, by, by the data, right? Now you can do it systematically, really, with the, the formula that we saw. And here I'll be assuming a uniform prior on X so that I can drop, I can ignore the prior for now on, uh, in the posterior here. So your, your posterior really becomes just the exponential of your parameter, of essentially your data minus your model over the uncertainty that you have. So here we had 5% uncertainty. And you get this distribution, which is trivial, right? So you get a mean that is um, exactly what you expect from solving this, uh, which is D minus two. And you get an uncertainty on X that is simply propagating this uncertainty, uh, this 5% uncertainty from the data. So your, your, so your width here is simply 0.5% uh, of D, right? Trivial example, and you recover, of course, exactly what you expect to recover from it. Now, let's say you change your model very slightly. Instead of having two plus x, you have some different, uh, you have some different value here. So your model is still linear, but with a different coefficient. What happens this time is if you have five, if you still have five percent uncertainty on your data, of course, you end up with a much wider uncertainty on your model parameter simply from the fact that your model doesn't depend a lot on the parameter. So the, the larger the uncertainty, the larger the uncertainty on X. And again, if you just compute your posterior, you obtain um, this, this result, which I will not walk you through. I think it's relatively trivial. Um, if you have questions, just ask. But again, you end up with, um, you know, you solve and the mean, so this is your, this is literally your result. Right? The probability distribution is your result. Now you can summarize the result as a mean here that again, you could solve trivially. It is an uncertainty. And this time the uncertainty is much bigger just because this linear coefficient here ends up dividing the, the uncertainty that you have. So again, you, you recover the intuitive answer that you have, um, that you expect to, to have. But let me just use this as the, a prototypical example of an issue that you will encounter during Bayesian parameter estimation, which is that if you want to know how much your, you want to have some intuition how much your observable depend on your parameters before you perform the Bayesian parameter estimation. Because if you don't have enough uh, dependence on it, you end up with a very, very broad distribution that will provide, in a sense, very limited information. So you, of course you can perform your Bayesian parameter estimation without knowing exactly how your observables depend on your parameter, but you might be extremely disappointed with the result. Um, you might just end up with essentially no constraint on your parameters. Now again, this was a very simple example, but it can rapidly become much more complicated. So I still assume there's no question at this point. I can move on to the next yes, section. Please. So 